All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna read through the snake that's eating Florida. And before we read, we need to look at the text and get familiar with it, just like we've been practicing in class all year long. So we're gonna look at the title, which I just read for you. And then um, on the next couple of pages, we have a illustration here with a caption that says, a match to the death. This python split open when it tried to swallow an alligator. And you can see in the picture that the snake was trying to eat the alligator and then his, you know, he split open. Um, over here we have um, another um, text feature. We have a map and it shows the United States. And the key tells us that the darker green is where the python thrives, where it, it prefers to live. Um, so, of course, in this text, we're talking about Florida, which is why we have it zoomed in here, zoomed in over the Everglades wetlands. Um, but you can see on this map that a good chunk of the southern United States is also prime territory for the Burmese python, including us in eastern North Carolina. That's kind of scary. Um, we have a sidebar down here. Remember, sidebars give us um, additional information about some of the things discussed in the text, but it doesn't really belong in the text. It doesn't fit there. So just kind of additional pieces of information. Um, and it talks about different invasive species, the starling, which we see around here a lot, and the medfly. And then on the back, we also have some more the wild pig and the Asian carp. I also noticed throughout the text that there are subheadings. Remember, subheadings tell us what the section that follows is going to be about. So if I get questions about like, what is the main idea of a certain section? I wanna look at that subheading to get an idea of what the main idea is. All right. The other text that goes with this one is tracking pythons. So this is a paired text. There's actually two texts that are talking about a similar topic that go well together. And we'll be reading both of those. All right, so we're gonna start on page 15. The snake that's eating Florida. Enormous snakes are taking over one of America's most prized wilderness areas. Can they be stopped? And as we are reading, the skill we're going to work with is problem and solution. Um, so think about what is the big problem being discussed here and what solution or solutions are proposed by the text to solve that problem. All right, so I'm gonna start. One January morning in 2003, a group of families was exploring Florida's Everglades National Park. It is a unique and beautiful wilderness, 2,400 square miles of protected wetlands. The, vi the visitors were admiring the wonders around them, rivers of golden grass stretching in all directions, the songs of frogs and crickets ringing in the humid air, the smell of orange blossoms from distant orchards. The group had high hopes for the day. Perhaps they'd see pink flamingos or majestic blue herons. Maybe they'd even catch a glimpse of an endangered Florida panther. As it turned out, the visitors were about to see something more unusual and horrifying than they could have imagined. Not far from the park's entrance, they noticed a violent splashing in the water. As they approached, they saw a massive alligator wrestling with an enormous snake. They would later learn that the snake was a Burmese python, a species not naturally found in the Everglades or anywhere in North America. The alligator had its jaws clamped around the snake. The snake was wrapped around the alligator. The animals struggled like monsters in a horror film. That's a nice simile there, right? Comparing what was actually happening with the animals to monsters in a horror film. Some of the visitors caught the scene on camera. Within days, the footage was broadcast on TV stations and websites around the world. To most people, this fight was little more than a thrilling and gruesome show. But to many wildlife experts, it was a symbol of a problem, a big, slithery problem. 
For years, some officials in the Everglades had been warning that Burmese pythons were living and breeding in the park. They worried that these enormous beasts could have a devastating impact on the fragile environment of the Everglades. The wrestling match helped capture the world's attention, but was it already too late? The Arrival the first Burmese pythons arrived in the U.S. innocently enough as pets. Some Americans have always enjoyed keeping strange, beautiful, and even dangerous creatures in their homes. Though many would agree that this is an unwise, even cruel, thousands of Americans own exotic pets, animals that are wild or don't normally live in the U.S. Want a white tiger? How about a baboon? Or maybe you're interested in a mamba a snake whose bite can kill a grown man in minutes. Unfortunately, all of these animals are easily and legally available for sale in parts of the U.S. Burmese pythons became popular as pets in the early 1990s. They were cheap, just $20 to $30 a snake. They are not venomous or aggressive towards humans. As babies curled up in tiny coils, they look quite cute. But then these adorable hatchlings grow and grow, and grow, and grow, and grow. An adult Burmese python can be more than 20 feet long. That's LeBron James times three. The snakes have enormous appetites for live animals. Not surprisingly, many buyers soon regret their purchases. And then what? Your friend might be happy to adopt the kitten you're allergic to, but a 20 foot snake that eats live bunnies? Many people end up setting their snakes loose in the wild. In many areas of the U.S., an abandoned snake would die of cold or starvation, but not in Florida. The climate is ideal for pythons, and no place in Florida is more perfect for them than the tropical Everglades. Carried by winds. Pythons were first spotted in Everglades National Park in the mid-1990s. People wondered, had just a few cast off pets made their way into this protected wilderness or had the snakes reached the park in some other way? No one was sure. Some people blamed Hurricane Andrew, which slammed into Florida in 1992. The storm was a whopper, a category five, the strongest. It killed 65 people and destroyed thousands of homes and businesses. Among the wrecked buildings was a warehouse full of exotic reptiles. Its collection included hundreds of baby Burmese pythons. Most of those babies died in the storm, but a few of the tiny snakes could have been carried away by the winds. The winds were blowing west that day. It was a straight shot to the Everglades. Did some of the babies make it to the park? At this point, it no longer matters how the snakes got to the Everglades. Today, their population is out of control. By some estimates, there could be as many as 100,000 pythons in the park. Their exact numbers are unknown. The snake's green and brown scales help them blend into the wetlands, making it nearly impossible to count them. But there is no doubt that pythons pose a grave threat to the fragile Everglades ecosystem. Invasive species. Burmese pythons are an invasive species which is a plant or an animal that is brought into a new environment and damages the species already living there. An estimated 5,000 invasive species live in the United States, with more reported each year. In some cases, the damage these invaders cause is devastating. Just ask bird lovers in Hawaii. They're still suffering from a decision made in 1883. Sugarcane farmers wanted to get rid of the rats that were harming their fields. So they imported 73 Indian mongooses from Jamaica, hoping the weasel-like animals would eat the rats. The plan failed, but the mongooses thrived. Their population grew and grew. Before long, the mongooses had devoured so many bird eggs, rodents, and reptiles that they were endangering many species. The mongoose infestation continues even today. On some Hawaiian islands where the songs of birds once filled the air, you're lucky to hear a few chirps. This kind of ecological disaster is what experts fear will soon happen in the Everglades. Burmese pythons breed quickly and easily, 
A female can lay as many as 100 eggs during mating season. The snakes have adapted to the different areas of the park, from the salty rivers and the freshwater ponds to the thick forests. They eat large quantities of almost anything, including reptiles, bird eggs, and sometimes even large mammals like deer. As their numbers grow, pythons threaten many kinds of animals, including endangered species. And what eats pythons? Well, rodents eat python eggs, but full-grown pythons are the kings and queens of the Everglades, which means they have no predators. What can be done? Hmm, that sounds like a solution. It is now against the law to bring Burmese pythons to the U.S. to sell. This will help prevent new pet snakes from being abandoned in the wild. But the python invasion of the Everglades is already an environmental crisis. So what can be done? Teams of scientists are working to track and trap the snakes. And Florida leaders organize a yearly python challenge in which hundreds of hunters compete to catch Burmese pythons. But it's not clear yet whether these efforts have helped reduce the python population. As one park ranger puts it, we are at war. Right now, the battle looks like that wrestling match between the alligator and the python. The struggle will go on for a long time. So far, nobody can say who will win.